Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, gonna be a Minrek Madness game sent to Sniper Monkey at the email address in the description, as always, with the subject of Minrek Madness. It's a gold, platinum, platinum, or diamond level replay, okay? If you want me to cast your Minrek Madness game, follow those rules. Bottom right, we've got Chim Chim, a Red Terran player, and on the top left, we have a Zerg player. Pejaro. I don't know what that means, but I feel like it's Spanish, and maybe it's a swear word or something, but I do not speak Spanish, so I have no idea. Steve the SCV scouting out. We've got Steve the SCV t-shirts at falconpaladin.store. Check it out if you like Steve the SCV and StarCraft as well, and Falcon Paladin. If you like all three of those things, the SCV t-shirt is for you. Alright, so 16 expansion here for Pejaro. And Barracks coming up inside the main base for Chim Chim. Just scouting. Just scouting. Just making sure it's not a pool first play. Worker scouting at the lower leagues is very, very good. Because if the sooner you scout cheese, the sooner you can prepare for it, right? So 16, 18, 17. Okay, so 16, 18, 17 here from Pejaro. We've got Chim Chim. Working on his barracks into an expansion and a second gas and a supply depot and a reaper and a reaper. No, and a reactor. Okay, that's all right. And wow, right at 400 supply here for Chim Chim. So these two players know how to open a TVZ in a standard way. That is Midrick Madness in a nutshell. Openings are good, but no plan survives contact with an enemy, says Sun Tzu. So the longer this game goes on, and the more fights that go on, the more your macro is going to slip, the more your build order is going to slip. And we will see who can come out on top here in mid-rank madness. We tear the overlords here too. Oh man, if you like overlords, you got to tear the overlord shirt out there at Falcon Paladin. Dot store. Check it out, man. Oh, pulled a drone off of gas. I'm gonna lose that gas and exchange it for a mineral. Mm. Don't like that. I mean, at least send the drone to return the gas and then get the minerals. It doesn't take you very much time whatsoever. Third base, maybe. Yeah, overlord. Check to make sure there's nothing crazy. No like bunker getting set up here or anything. And bam. Third base coming in. On the other side, what's the Terran going to do to slow this down? Well, going for a three racks opening. Who oh boy. Three racks can be really strong against Protoss especially. But if you show up with a ton of Marines earlier than the Zerg player expects you to, you can definitely kill them that way too. It's just the problem is no medevacs because you don't have a factory. But this can be really tough, especially if it's a stim timing. Where you get stim, you got the three racks, you're just pumping marines, maybe a couple marauders in there nonstop in case there are some roaches to deal with. I mean, woof. I like it. Three racks, man. We've seen players win with this at the professional level. Not in the games that I cast necessarily, but when I'm casting for a Freak of World, out at AfrikaTV.com slash laughing games every couple of weeks there, we sometimes get a player, Cure likes to do it. Here in TVP likes to go for a three racks against Protoss and just show up like right here with, you know, 17 or 18 Marines Marauders with Stim and just go bah, bap the Protoss right in the face because they don't have any splash damage yet. It hits so fast. And Pajardo losing an Overlord but did scout the three racks, recognize the threat that three racks is, at least we hope so from Pajardo. He is, I don't know about walling off here. I mean, it's Terran, right? He doesn't care about your wall. You're just going to sack your third base? I mean, you got to get units here. A couple spines, maybe. I like the Roach Warren. Roaches are going to trade better against Marines without medevac support. And not as good against Marauders, though, because that... Ooh, Chim Chim's throwing some of those out, too. Like I said, like I said, maybe, maybe the Marauders are going to be really good here against some Roaches that Pejaro is going to throw up. Yeah, I would honestly maybe stop droning at this point. you got a three bases. You've got a worker advantage on a two-basing Terran here. He wants to hit you soon. So the more stuff you have, the better. But instead, 14 drones are on the way from Pejaro. He was oversaturating his natural, but then he split somewhere. He split those workers off, I guess, right onto this gas. And now he's saturating up his third. Look, okay, fine. If you can get away with saturating your third base before the attack shows up and then make army units, 
That's great. I can I can support that, but you're not going to get away with that very often. Traditionally, a three base timing, you start running across the map as soon as you have about, you know, 30, 40 seconds left on your stim timing. And then you show up when stim finishes and bam, you get that advantage immediately. Chim Chim appears to be not doing that. Instead, maybe waiting for Stim to finish up back home. He's got some idle SCVs here. He needs to get to work. Okay, great. They're getting to work. They're hard walling here. Let's see if there are more drones on the way from Baharo. He's at 59 to 32 workers. This should definitely be a Zerg win. At this point, if you get up to three bases and 60 workers in the first five minutes and the Terran has done absolutely nothing to try to ruin your day, you really should just beat them, honestly, fairly quickly. You should be able to almost max out here soon. And then kind of show up at the Terran who doesn't have a third base and isn't really spending his money particularly well and just kind of ruin him. Yeah, I mean, Chim Chim went for what looked like a three-rack stim timing, but instead kept his units at home, got the stim, got the combat shield. He's got what he wants here. He's just not able to kill anything because the Zerg is not coming to him. Right? Right. Man, Pajaro, I like what he's doing. Creep spreading to cover his whole map here. He doesn't have an army to speak of at all. He's got a roach. Okay, he just made 11 roaches. He's got 11 roaches and a bunch of lings. Army value is in favor of the Zerg player, but roaches are a lot of supply and not a ton of value. You need to have more of them if you're going to deal with this big marine marauder engagement here. I wonder when Chim Chim's going to move out. What's he waiting for? He's not getting any further upgrades. Is he waiting for like a particular... I guess he's getting a tank. Maybe waiting for the tank. That could be good. Well, yeah. Pejaro, maybe get a fourth base at six minutes. Why not? Terran player is not coming to kill you, as far as you know. Do you see, have any vision down here? Okay, that's something he could probably work on, right? Like, have a ling down at the bottom of this ramp. So, when the Terran starts moving out, you're aware of it. Right now, you're entirely blind until the edge of your creep. The creep spread's not incredibly good either. So, this Terran is going to catch you by surprise. Here we go. So, now a couple of medevacs. Got a siege tank. Some... There it is. Siege tank popping out. It's a weird timing for Chim Chim. You could have more medevacs, you could have better upgrade, you could have plus one attack here. If you're going to go three racks, you need to hit earlier, is the thing here. This is not really a build, as Harstam would say. But anyway, we're pushing out. Army value 66 to 58. Ten more roaches coming out, and army value is going to be pretty significantly higher for the Zerg player once those roaches pop. No Ravagers is a bit of a concern. Ravagers in the back with their extra range doing extra damage here is pretty good stuff. Six Hydras would be really nice here, too. Providing a ton of damage. There's the scan, and he stims in. Says, we can deal with this many roaches, absolutely. Also, free queens, yes. Killing your creep tumors. Coming up this ramp, and Abaharo. Uh, both players feeling a little bit iffy about that engagement. They don't like what they see. Dude, if some lurkers, a lurker den here from Baharo would be game-ending. Lurkers are insanely good at this level of StarCraft. Okay, so now Hydra's getting extra damage. He wants, I think he wants to get a concave, but he keeps getting up the ramp where he's not going to have a concave anymore. Chim Chim's not going to have a concave if he's coming up the ramp either. What a weird engagement this is. I guess you could, uh, the shooting from the low ground to the high ground going a lot better for Chim Chim than high to low there was for the Zerg player, but it's still 66 to 45 army value. A lot of that is queens, which, yeah, the queens are dying all over the place here, aren't they? Roach Hydra chasing, picking off the medevacs, targeting those. Yes! Targets one of the medevacs. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right. So still no third base here from Chim Chim. He really, really needs one, and he figures that out at about 840. Bam. Starts building that third base. Roach Hydra, good. What's better, though? Roach Hydra Lurker, or just Roach Lurker. Like, you're honestly going to defeat Chim Chim pretty easily if you can pull that off. Army value is 62 to 57. Fourth base finally coming in from Pajaro at about nine minutes. He could have had a base here and that as much army as he did when the army showed up from Chim Chim because it was so gosh darn late. Any upgrades to speak of? Well, got plus one missile attack, and that's that's nice. Getting uh, plus one a ground carapace is Pajaro. Getting plus one attack now is Chim Chim too, but he doesn't have any upgrades as of now. Creep spread is a little bit anemic. He's got active tumors, and I guess they're on cooldown, so... Fair enough. Okay, now that one's ready to go. Go! <laughs> I'm holding you to too high of a standard, sir. I think I feel like that's what I'm doing here. You really, but still, creep, you need to pay attention to creep. There we go. So tiny bit late, nothing too crazy though. As long as you're active with those creep tumors, you're gonna have a much better time against everyone. Against Protoss, against Terran. 
Zerg's a little bit more of a more of a question there because the speed bonus applies to the enemy too. So you help enemy lings get across the map if you've got your creep spread across the entire map to the enemy, right? So you kind of want to watch out for that. It gives you advanced warning when the lings come, but they get there faster, so it's like, Rrr. don't know. More hydras coming in. I'd love to see some lurkers. I don't know if we're gonna get any of those today, though. Really don't. Medivac count is healthy, man. Plus one, plus one coming in for these marines and marauders. 12 more hydras out, and he's kind of pre-set up here. I think he wins that battle, except for the siege tanks. I think that was a good call. He was winning it, but he's like, ah, two, three tanks are sieging up. That's not good for us. So Terran is going to keep him on the back foot. He's maxed out. 200 total supply here. 130 army value. Roach Hydra with the plus one attack here. And so oh, beautiful. Sniping the tank. Getting a sick concave. Get in further, though. The Hydras in the back can attack. The tank down. Kind of focusing down a little bit here. Uh, okay. All right. Medivac's down. Is that it? 108 to 42 total supply. The tanks did not do as well as I thought they would. Of course, they don't have any upgrades at all. But still, I think they do better against Hydras. And the Zerg player's like, well... I guess we come up and see if there's a third base, because he has no idea if there's a third base there at all. And there's not. So he's like, oh, uh, kind of expected you to have a third. Well, that's a fourth, actually. This would be a third, though. One tank, two tank, three tanks on the high ground. There are four. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So at this point, let the Terran turtle on two bases. If he wants to hang out here, he absolutely is allowed to do so. He's going to mine out. You, on the other hand, are on four bases. You're going to have a huge friggin' bank. Even if in a direct engagement he kills your army, you can remax like that. And then you're a happy, happy camper. So this is, I would expand again. Sitting on 2,000 minerals, like expand twice. Expand here, expand here. So the Terran player even has a hard time killing them both because they're on opposite sides of the map, right? Infestation pit coming in, going for a spire. Oh, spire. Marine count not super healthy, actually. There's only 12 of them. Everything else is marauders and tanks. And there's no turrets, you know? Honestly, like 25 mutas would probably just win the game here. I like it. Of course, he's supply blocks, so we can't make any mutalisks. You'd have to trade out some of this Roach Ravager, or Roach Hydra. I'm just so used to saying Roach Ravager. Roach Hydra is a bit of a more, a bit of a rarer composition. Scan, sees where's, where the Zerg is. Oh, he's doing the thing. Pajaro expanding twice where I thought he should. Hey, hey. Pajaro's listening to the cast is what he's doing. Where is his, time for a hive too. Got your infestation pit. Let's get up to a hive. Why not? Bit of a scan there. Uh, yeah, just scanning what the army is. And you know what it is. It's roaches. It's hydras. They got plus two attack. They got plus one armor. Working on plus two armor here. And Chim Chim, third base, 13 minutes. Bit late. Bit problematic here from Chim Chim. But he's got his marines. He's got his marauders. He's got his siege tanks. Tanks are working on their plus one attack. Pajaro's like, do I want to... Oh, you're going to leave your tanks behind? Absolutely. Let me kill your tanks real fast, and I'll trade out some of my own supply so I can test... Oh, my gosh. And third base run, so I can get into maybe... Nope, no mutalisks. Just more hydras. Coming up the ramp. I think he can win it here, but being careful... I'm not going to tell him not to be careful here. Going up a ramp into an army defended position from a Terran is often suicide. Most of the time, it's suicide. That kind of time, it would have worked. Because there's only two tanks, and like I guess the other two tanks aren't even sieged up, so... It could have worked. And again, you can remax on 18... How many mutalisks can you make here? 16 mutas. And probably just wander in and kill everything else and win the game after that. So, it's a situation where you're way ahead. You can afford to make some more reckless decisions. And I will support you as you do them. But you gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta make it happen. Alright, what do we got? Bam, bam. Sending a single roach up to see what's going on. What? I mean, there's tanks and marauders, so roach 
is dead because of course it is. Creep spread once again is kind of halted here from Pejaro. He's got a bank, but he's maxed out, so that's reasonable. Getting some overseers to see what's going on here. But yeah, Terran player maxed mind out of his main. I mean, he's got, my gosh, 50 workers on two bases is way too many workers on two bases. He wanted to get a third and send some SCVs down there, but uh, he was too late on it. He let the Zerg player do whatever he wanted. This is just an absolutely beautiful example of why you have to mess with a Zerg player pretty consistently if you're a Terran. If you don't do it, this will happen to you. This will happen to you. If the Terran player wins this thing, I'm going to eat my hat. There is just no way a Terran player would ever, should ever be able to win this game from this position. Two bases at 15 minutes. He's going to get Nidus. There was a Nidus network being produced. There's some Mutas coming in too. Mutas could just show up right here, wipe out all these SCVs. There's nothing to stop it. There's no turrets. There's no Marines here at all. Same thing. I guess there are some Marines here at the natural base, but... This is, this is just absolutely tough for the Terran player, but he's given us a good education on if you're going to play Terran, you got to harass. You got to start with a Reaper, maybe go into some Banshees, some Hellions, do something to where the Zerg player can't do what Paharo did here and just sit back with a couple Queens and four Lings and just enjoy droning up forever and ever, which is exactly what he did until he was at 60 workers and everything was okay. Oh, good response with these Marines though. Couple SCVs die. I'm not sure how much value they're providing for Chim Chim, though, is the problem. But yeah, special thanks to Sniper Monkey for screening all the replays that are sent to him for Midrick Madness and Brave Noob World. Brave Noob World is bronze and silver. Send him the Sniper Monkey with the subject of Brave Noob World. And Midrick Madness, again, is gold, platinum, and diamond. You're in that level, and 90% of you are, if not everybody watching this is. Then by all means, send your replay to Sniper Monkey, and he will let me know which ones are the most entertaining and which ones have room for coaching and stuff, and we'll get them taken care of. So this is definitely a coaching replay if there ever was one. I'm really curious. He's made a Nidus, but he, oh, these Mutas, they did a good job running until they didn't. Yeah, I'm just curious about the Nidus. Is he ever going to use it? He's got it just in case, I guess. He's got some overseers spotting a beautiful spot for it while you're at it. Jim Jim, look, man, it's either get a third base or die right now, sir. These are, that's your choice. That's your options. That's what you've got going here today, lads. Is it enough? I'm telling you, if the Terran player manages to win this thing, I'm not completely ruling it out because, like, a disastrous engagement for the Zerg player is possible. And then maybe he doesn't have enough available... Well, he's got 35 larvae. Enough larvae to remax, but he does. He's got a lot of larvae. There's just... He's got everything covered. He's got 69 total workers. The income is hugely favoring our guy. And he's got Muta swinging in. Okay. Yeah. Every bit of income you've got is dying. Chim Chim. It's time to move out. It is time. He moved out. It's time to win this game now because you are not winning this game. The longer the game goes on, the worse it is for you. Yeah, I mean, SCV's dying all over the place. Still no... Oh, a turret was built here. One turret was built. Oh, I'm just kidding. Three turrets. I am so blind. Here we go. Bad engagement for the Zerg player. That's what I was kind of worried about here. Stutter stimming into it. Marines and Marauders. If the Hydras are focusing on the tanks, the Marines and Marauders... Nope, they did it. They decided to stop focusing so hard on the tanks. And this is what we're talking about. All of the Zerg army dies, but trades out very well against the Terran army. And now we've got 16 Hiders and 24 Roaches in production. And that's what Zerg can do. That's why you can't ever allow them to have a 10,000 mineral, 5,000 gas bank. Because then you might have a good trade with them, but they can remax a billion times faster than you can. And that's your GG. We're done. We are finished. Army value 132 to 41. No third base for the Terran player at all today which is brutal i'd say this is probably more of a gold replay than a diamond one today but the openings were good and the fact that the zerg player is able to win this game with zero splash damage is just more about chim chim being a little bit of a lower level player than about non-splash zerg strategies being good against terran right yeah or yeah <laughs> you're gonna want banelings you're gonna want lurkers you're gonna want something to deal with the bio. Uh, if you just have more stuff though, and it's roaches and hiders, and all they're doing is single target, 
Maybe you're not going to be cost efficient, but by golly, you can get it done nevertheless. 18,000 resources lost for Paharo, 18,000 lost for Chim Chim. That's not good as a Terran player. If the Zerg, Zerg player is losing as many resources as you are, terrible. Any GG's out. Good man, Paharo is your winner. Excellent stuff there. We're going to pause it because he's kind of racking up some extra unearned kills here. But GG, well done, Paharo. He just played it well. I mean, I, he took some risks not having anything if the Terran player showed up. He didn't have any vision to see if the Terran was going to show up. But, you know, he got away with it. He got lucky with it today. And again, having no splash damage either, he got away with that one too. So, GG. Well done there, Pajaro. I just, he lost 70 Hydras and 61 Roaches. It was a ton of dead army supply. But if your Terran player never gets a third base, then you don't have to worry about anything, really. A two-basing Terran in a 20-minute game is just nothing at all you ever need to concern your pretty little head with, you know? And that's exactly what Baharo did. He wasn't worried today. But if we had a heart rate monitor on him, it would have shown up and just been, you know, pretty calm, pretty steady throughout the entire game. So, well done. Like, truly fantastic stuff. And that's going to be it from me. So, this has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and Minrake Madness. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.